All right, we're ready to apply our Scrafino Gray. Uh, there's a couple ways that you can apply it. It really depends on what uh, your desired finish is. You know, some applicators prefer a traditional hand trowel. Uh, others prefer this tool, which is a, a, a variation of a squeegee that's called a magic trowel. Actually, the, uh, this was derived from the faux finish world for, for decorative plasters, and we found that uh, it really works quite nicely for putting a, a, a skim coat like Scrafino down. So we're going to go ahead and uh, show you both methods. We'll just dump some of the material right here, Mr. Brian. Uh, and then we'll talk, talk about it here a little more. That'll do. So when you're putting this material down, remember this, this can be used both inside or out. So it's an exterior or an interior product. So say for example, this was a, uh, a patio or a driveway or a walkway. One of the things that does not look good is to not treat the edge of the material. So, or the side of the, the concrete, the existing concrete. So what I like to do is just go ahead and let, let it run right over the side like that. So at a minimum, it's the same color. And Brian, if you wouldn't mind just taking a brush and just kind of brushing that edge. Another common thing that I see is, uh, you know, most exterior concrete has existing joints. So it's, it's okay to go ahead and let a, let a little bit of this material just kind of ooze down in your existing contraction joint over here. And then um, what we'll do is just take a paintbrush and brush it right back out of the joint, like so. So now, we're not building it up real thick, but at least the joint is the same color, simply by just brushing it out, like you see me doing right here. So that's a really nice way of ad addressing your existing uh, joints in your concrete, okay? So the hand trowel, if I push too hard, we're going to get little comet trails from the, from the coarsest sands in here, like this. So with, this, with that material in the first coat anyways, that's too, too hard. I'm pushing too hard, okay? And so I'm just putting this material down at about the thickness of the actual sands that are in the mix. So this is how fast, if this was a job here outside, we'd just be brushing the joints like so. You never want to build this in a real thick layer. It's okay to let it dry in between coats and keep layering, but you never want to put this material down a quarter of an inch thick or anything like that. That's entirely too thick. So we're going to just keep building, okay? So now I'm going to come right back over here <clears throat> and continue our application on the side there. Brian's going to brush that edge. All right, I've roughly applied, let's say, a three foot pass. I just got the material out there kind of quick. Now I'm going to go and, and what I call refine it, okay? Meaning we've, we've kind of dispersed the material. I'm going to clean my trowel. Now I'm just going to simply come back and take a few of the trowel ridges out. Each time what I do is I clean my trowel. The goal is to not leave any substantial ridges despite the fact we're going to sand it. So you'll notice my trowel pattern too. I'm, I don't just do this. That doesn't look organic. So in the event, perhaps we had unlevel concrete that we do get some trowel lines, it looks natural to have overlapping patterns. Now, especially if we were to come back and stain it, it actually uh, adds some interest. That's how the hand trowel works. Now we're going to talk about the magic trowel. All right, dump me a little bit more, please. You're right there, it's fine. So the way the magic trowel works, um, a lot of people are not aware there's a definite technique to using the magic trowel. 
And what I'm talking about is when I'm, when I'm going one direction, I want you to watch, focus in on my hand here. If I'm going this way from the left to the right, I'm actually taking my thumbs and I'm twisting the handle. And what that does is it puts more pressure over here, thus feather edging out here. Conversely, if I turn and come back this way, I'm actually twisting the handle to the right, feather edging the outer edge. So I'm going to demonstrate real slow. So I'm, I'm, I'm now feather edging, as you see here. And I also want you to see this one little pass that I do over here. I, I clean it after every single pass. I just want to get that buildup of material off of my blade. And as you can see, it lays it down really nice and flat. So this is a great way to put the Scrafino down. Now, I just for demonstration purposes, want to show you if I wasn't putting tension on the handle, in other words, if I was just running it straight, do you see that line right there? That's what we're trying to avoid. So simply by twisting the handle, it blends and makes the line fade into the surface. Okay, so we'll finish this out with the magic trowel. One other tip with the magic trowel I see uh, beginners make is, and we can just, we're done with that trowel, is let's say for example there's a there's a problem right here. In other words, they, they needed to fix something out here. The natural tendency for, for a beginner is to take the magic trowel and simply reach out and try to fix it. Now look what I've done is I've created another line. So you never want to reach out like that. Here is the problem area that we're trying to fix. I'm always going to start over here by my side. I'm going to start here, fix the problem, finish over here to my side. So the point is, don't ever just reach out like that, because you'll never make that line go away. As you can see, as I'm talking my way through this application, it's a very, it, to be honest, it's a very easy uh, application. It's, it's a pretty quick application once you learn how to work with this material. Okay, there you have it. That, uh, that's our first application of Scrafino. Depending on uh, substrate and ambient temperatures, we're going to come back uh, probably in about an hour and a half to two hours. And we're going to sand this with a, a 120 grit screen. And we're going to knock off any little nibs or ridges. And we're ready to go on to the next application, which is going to be the Scrafino Fine. We're getting ready to apply our second application of Scrafino Fine. So remember, on our first application, what we did is we applied uh, a nice coat of Scrafino Regular Gray. Um, and about 10 hours has transpired. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use a sanding screen or sandpaper on the bottom of our machine, and we're going to sand it. Remember, it's not always necessary to sand it. If you put the, the, uh, the, the skim coat down with uh, no trowel lines or any divots or anything, and there's really no reason to sand it. And if you come back within four hours, you can uh, simply sp uh, sprinkle some water on it, SSD, saturated surface dry, and you can go right onto the surface with your second coat of Scrafino Fine. In this case, since 10 hours has elapsed, and we want to demonstrate for the, for the purpose of the video, we're going to go ahead and show you sanding. Um, if you sand it, you, you need to reprime with a diluted coat of CP1000 at one part water to one part CP1000. Um, also, if you exceed that four hour window, you need to uh, also ap apply another coat of the diluted um, CP1000. So let's demonstrate how we sand this. Okay, so if there were any ridges or perhaps a little nib, what it's done is it's knocked it off uh, perfectly 
perfectly level and flush and it's actually, a, I can see a sheen and believe it or not, it's starting to polish. So from here, we're going to have Brian start to vacuum this and uh, once it's all vacuumed up, it's time to apply our CP1000. We've just finished sanding our panel of Scrafino regular gray. Uh, we did use a 100 grit sanding screen uh, on the bottom of the machine. It's now been vacuumed. There's no residual dust. It's time to apply our diluted primer. Now on a much larger project, you can just fog spray on. Uh, and it's not a bad idea to just have somebody quickly back rolling uh, to help force it down in the pores. Here we're just going to go ahead and dump some on here and we're going to roll it. So it's real simple. Uh, as soon as the material is dry, meaning there's no damp spots and it's uh, tack free when you touch it, it's no longer sticky. You're ready to go right on to your next step and apply your Scrafino fine.